3.4 properties of exponential functions the graph of an exponential function of the form y equals a times b to the x is increasing if the a value is greater than 0 and the b value is greater than 1 so the basis bigger than 1 and this number is greater than 0. So a positive number here and this number is a number bigger than 1. If that's the case, then we're going to look at a graph that looks like this. This is your asymptote right here and this is an exponential function increasing from left to right. Okay, so from left to right as x gets larger so do the y's and that means it's an increasing function. All right, <clears throat> the domain of such exponential function is x belongs to real and y belongs to real such that y is greater than zero. Because the horizontal asymptote, which is at y equals zero, it is underneath the actual graph. So therefore, the y values are everything above zero, zero being the asymptote. Next part. If a basic exponential table is as follows, okay? Now, a basic equation looks like this. You have y equals b to the x. This is your basic equation. All equations, exponential equations, start off looking like this. So you would write that equation at the very, very top of the actual table on the left hand side y equals b to the x then what you would do is you choose the following x values you're going to choose negative 2 negative 1 okay 0 1 and 2 so we're going to go through all of these and I will explain this to you so what this is is these will be your x values Throughout the whole entire thing, guaranteed these are your x values, okay? And they're always the same x values you will have for the basic exponential function. Now, the y values for the basic are going to be whatever it equals when you plug in the negative 2. So when I plug in negative 2 up here, right here, I'm going to get b to the negative 2. b to the negative 2 simplified is 1 over b squared b to the negative 1 is 1 over b, b to the 0 is 1, b to the 1 is b, and b to the 2 is b squared. Now don't forget there's also a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. So this is the basic table you will always start with whenever you need to graph the function. This is the basic exponential table you will always use. In grade 12, you will hear the word parent function. Basically, this is how all of them start off with before we apply all the transformations, which we'll see in a later, a later section. Now again, just recapping what this means, this is b to the negative 2, okay? So this means that it's b to the negative 2, that means that when I flip this base, so negative means flip the base, it becomes 1 over b, 1 over b all squared. That's how you get 1 over b squared. Now, the next part is if I change it to negative 1, that's this part right here, I'm going to get 1 over b. If it's 0, I get the answer 1. If it's 1, I get b. If it's 2, I get b squared. So that's where all of these values came. Again, remember, you're substituting these as your x's into the equation to find the basic exponential table, the y values. All right. Let's say we had a base of 2. What would our basic table look like? Again, we start off, how will it look? Well, our basic equation is y equals 2x. That's what you would write above here. And you would have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2, plus the horizontal asymptote as my x values. 
and then we would go in and substitute it into the equation to get our y values. So here will be 1 over 4. So again, if you saw that just there quickly, what we're actually doing is plugging in negative 2 for x. You can see that here. Negative 2 for the x, that's what we did. And 2 to the negative 2, folks, is 1 over 4. Then we do it again. We're plugging in negative 1 up into the exponent. You get 1 over 2. Next, 0, 1, 1, 2, and 2, 4. If you're wondering where all this came from, folks, look over here. It's the same idea. And remember that the base was 2, so instead of b, we're just replacing the b with a 2. All right. Let's look at another example. y equals 5 to the x. What should you get? Well, I recommend you stop the video now and try this yourself. All right, we're back. What values will we get? Well, when we plug in negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2 for x values, we can substitute it in. We're going to get 1 over 5 squared, which is 1 over 25, 1 over 5, 1, 5, and 25. Those will be the basic table for y equals 5 to the x. All right. What does the basic table look like? So what we're going to do is instead of writing a, a graph with b, we're going to use an example of y equals 2 to the x. And we had these coordinates earlier that we looked at. We need to graph these. What does this look like? Well, the horizontal asymptote at 0 and the points. So we plug in our points, we plug in the horizontal asymptote, and we draw our curve. And this is what we'll have. Note here, folks, that I did not use the same number of blocks along the horizontal that I did along the vertical. You don't need to. What's important is that along the horizontal, you use the same ratio. Along the vertical, you use the same counting of the number of blocks, but you do not necessarily need to have the same. Also, we have no values down here, so it would not make sense for you to have anything written down below, and this graph really should take up the entire page. So we're going to talk about what's expected for a graph. Remember that an equation is expected, a smooth rounded curve, arrows, a broken line for the horizontal asymptote and the equation of that horizontal asymptote. Now exponential growth or decay can be expressed as an equation y equals a b to the x. Now the question that a lot of students have is how do I know what it will look like? Well a graph looks like this when the a value is greater than zero, a value is positive, and the b value is greater than 1. A graph will look like this when you have an a value that is greater than 0 and a b value that is between 0 and 1. The next one you will look like this. Okay, so again, the asymptote is on the x-axis for all of these folks. A graph will look like this when the a value is less than 0 and the b value is greater than 1. And the last one, it will look like this when the a value is less than 0 and the b value is between 0 and 1. And we'll have more examples of this. But generally, you have to remember most of the graphs start off looking like, either like this or like this depending on the base value. A base with greater than 1 will look like this. A base between 0 and 1 will look like this. And from there, we can graph every graph. But in the meantime, what is this? Is this a growth or decay? That's right, that should be a growth, so it increases. This is a decay, it decreases. The next one, that's right, it decreases. And increases over here, because from left to right, the y values are going up. So increasing means that as x increases in 
the y increases, sorry. So as x increases, y increases. Decreasing means that as x increases, the y values decrease. So y decreases. All right, last little bit. When matching a graph, you have to remember the following to an equation. You first look for the y-intercept. And that means you sub x equals zero. That's a really good place to start. The second part is to compare the equation and the graph, i.e. look for increasing or decreasing values to help you. Look to see if it's a growth or a decay, looking at the equation. So here's the homework that you have to finish off for this section. And uh, we'll be looking at more graphs in later sections. Have a numerical day. Take care.